important, but let's talk about the thousands of women right now in DeKalb County, in the Gwinnett County, in Rockville County who are without jobs. This is about jobs first, and that's why I'm disappointed in the congressman. He will not come and talk about jobs. There is no plan. As a matter of fact, at the first debate, I revealed one of my economic development plans was to get money to go and extend the rail, MARTA, from South DeKalb out to Stonecrest. Okay. That would create thousands of jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, eight-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, my partner and friend, Mr. Manity. So we're proud to have... First, a young lady who has distinguished herself as a state senator. She's also uh, previously been a candidate for the 4th Congressional District, and now she's a reigning, powerful DeKalb County Commissioner, Ms. Connie Stokes. Thank you. Now the, the man that everybody knows, he's Mr. Personality, Mr. Controversy, Mr. 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 Uh, Cachet, you know, he, he's, uh, <laughs> you know, Mr. Colorful. He's also become almost like the co-host of, of Newsmakers Live, he's here so often. You know? But he's our friend, he's a good guy, he's, he's, he's run for Senate unsuccessfully. I think he learned some lessons there. He ran an eight-time, I mean, a two-term uh, CEO of DeKalb County, and, and whether you like him personally or not, you can't argue with his record. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome um, DeKalb County's own Vernon Jones. Wow. Wow. Nice to see you. Thank you. Lady and gent, um, lady and gent, there's an empty seat here. Uh, what's 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 at play with the incumbent? Have you run him off the stage? I'm told it's not the only time he's not been here. Is he just a, doesn't want to appear with you guys, or have you insulted him, hurt his feelings, or something? Is he a, a inept, a incompetent candidate, or incumbent, or incumbents that far off the radar screen they don't don't even compete anymore? I could go on and on. Uh, where is Hank Johnson, and what does it mean to your campaign? Well, first of all, I want to thank Newsmaker Live for having us all here tonight. Uh, I'm just glad to be a part of this. Uh, as it relates to the incumbent, I don't know where he is, but I know why I'm running. I'm running to reclaim the American dream for the people of the 4th Congressional District. Uh, I'm hoping that people will uh, see something in my candidacy, that I can relate to them. I've served, as you stated, 10 years in the State Senate. And the important thing is, I think experience is very important in this race. And uh, we, we talk a lot about fresh ideas. We definitely need that. That's innovation. But experience is very important. And I've had 16 years of experience as a legislator. So I'm, I'm asking the people of the 4th Congressional District to send me to Washington to get some results, results around jobs. That's the main thing. And that's uh, done by supporting small businesses, uh, I've been a small business owner myself. I owned a Remax franchise for 10 years until I sold it. I had 45 agents. So I understand what the pain is around those issues. And then reclaiming the American dream also means education. It means uh, home ownership, which I've been a real estate broker for many years. A lot of people, someone stopped me in the parking lot today asking me to help them to be able to save their home. So those are the reasons why I'm running for, for this seat. And I'm asking the people to vote for me on July 20th. And I have a long list of other reasons, but I'm going to let my I, I want to I want to <laughs> follow, follow up very quickly because Vernon is going to talk a long yeah, time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That person in the park can ask you how you going to help them save the home. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a county commissioner, and as a congressperson, how could you do that? Well, you know, that's a very good question. And let me just say to you, this... Without just being po I, political I'm not, about I, it. I'm not. I'm not. This... This is a, a position of leadership. It's a position of leadership being a senator, being a commissioner. And when she stopped me in the parking lot, she wouldn't care what I did. If she doesn't care if it's the commission, if it's national, she wants to be able to save her home. And what we can do and what I can do is I've worked a lot, not just being a real estate broker, but in chairing the task force that we had, the DeKalb County Foreclosure Task Force, that I will say my colleague, he'll tell you, but we worked on it together. Uh, but but what, what, I did, what I did was went to Washington, met with the HUD officials so that I could clearly understand 
understand how to help her. And I have records of people out there that we've been able to help. So it's not like taking money out of the budget to help her, but it's knowing what, the, it's being an advocate and knowing what those issues are and how to get that done. But will she have some money to pay for that house next week? <laughs> Well, you know, there are a lot of different things that we, we can do, but we won't give them money. We Ver don't have money to give them. Vernon, is, is the incumbent, the MJC, is he ducking you guys? Is he du have you talked about him so bad you want to show up with him? With well, first of all, let me thank you and the executive producer and all the folks that are here tonight, because this is so important. It's very important. So I want to thank you for being here. And secondly, I, I certainly want to thank Ms. Parker. Ms. Ms. Parker is with Crossroads News, and for her being here, sharing her wisdom, uh, she's a esteemed journalist herself. Columbia University graduate. She, she got two of them in here. And Caribbean too. I like that Caribbean oh, yeah, flavor right. she had. So, uh, but thank you for being here, Ms. Parker, because she has been covering a lot of what's been happening. But I I'll say this, uh, Commissioner, or I should say Congressman Johnson is a nice man. Uh, I consider him a friend. I am disappointed, as important as the issues are in this fourth congressional district, that he's not here to give you his position He's not here to talk to you about his vision. He's not here to talk about how he would create jobs. He is literally using press releases as an incumbent to send to local papers so they can say, oh, I got appointed to this committee or that committee. And it's unfortunate because people want to ask him questions. They want to know where he's staying. I certainly want to do, do it. I want to debate him openly, publicly, civilly, uh, and talk about what's really important. From day one, I've been talking about jobs first because no matter what, Schools are closing because of shortfall of revenues. Small businesses are closing because not having access to credit. The banks got bailed out on Wall Street, and they started buying other banks that didn't make credit available for those of us who wanted to either refinance our homes or buy a new home. At the same time, when you look at AIG and those others, they're posting record profits, record profits. And, and right now, people are still losing their homes. Banks are still slow to provide credit, and people are still out of jobs, small businesses, across the board, they were left out on the stimulus package. And I ask anybody in here, who got a stimulus check? Let me ask any small business in here, who got a stimulus check? They did it the wrong way with that stimulus check. They put the Wall Street guys around the table, and they were the ones who determined who was going to get the money. Where were the people at that table that looked out for us each day? The, the people who have small businesses, the people who are working in meals, the people who are, who are barely making it. Where were they? Their tax dollars were used, Maynard, but they were left out of the equation. So That's where I would have done something totally you different. You wouldn't have voted for it? Uh, no, I wouldn't have voted for the stimulus package. I would have been having, having the experience of creating jobs. Since I've been in office the past eight, eight years as chief executive, we've been able through our economic development to create over 16,000 jobs. There are people who are working in the cab right now with capital projects, infrastructure projects that were based on the stimulus package that I passed in 2004 to build libraries, to improve our infrastructure. They are working right now. And those who are not working on the projects, who are in the back offices doing the clerical work, they are keeping their jobs because those small businesses have gotten access to some of those contracts. Ms. Stokes, you were there part of the time with him. Was he that good? Did he do all that? I had to approve it. <laughs> <laughs> he said... Vernon, and, and look, Mr. Mr. Former CEO, he called me every Monday. It's, okay, what are we going to do tomorrow? That's the truth. Tell him that's the truth. But we did. We did. We did. I mean, that's the truth. That's the way it works if you understand the process. Uh, we have CEO Burl Ellis there now, and uh, that's what the CEO does, and that's what the commissioners do. I have, to, I have to read all of the ordinances and make sure that it's something that we want to move forward. But let me just get back to this because... Uh, it is very important that we help small businesses. It is very, very important. 65% of the jobs are created through small businesses. I've been a small business person myself. It's documented. It's not difficult to find. But uh, we really, really need to do that. And one of the ways we do that is making sure they have access to capital. When I talk to people about supporting small businesses, and someone mentioned to me, like, for example, the Small Business Administration. The Small Business Administration does training. That's about what they do. And most people will tell you that I can't get any help through going through the Small Business Administration. So that's very, very important that we do that so that we can create jobs and, and be able to uh, turn this economy around. Many people around. are lamenting. May, may I respond to that? Because it is important. Uh, Commissioner Stokes is right in some regards. As a chief executive, I provide the agenda. And of course, there are items that they have to approve. 
But this initiative, the spear, the tip of the spear of this initiative has Vernon Jones written all over it. And actually, ultimately, it was the people of DeKalb County who believe in me who went out and voted for it overwhelmingly. Not the commissioners. Matter of fact, some of them didn't think it was going to pass, and they started hiding. Didn't want to get out and campaign because they said this is a referendum on Vernon Jones's leadership. So in all honesty, if you look at the tip of that spear, Vernon Jones is on it. And as a matter of fact, before the commission even got in there, uh, we had economic projects going on. I create the first office of economic development in DeKalb County's history. And Commissioner St uh, Stokes was, uh, uh, respectfully now, she was in the legislature. Is this a, a, a ret referendum on Vernon Jones, <laughs> his power, his prestige, his prominence? Well, let me just say this. If anybody pay attention in DeKalb County, no, I am running, not running and hiding from anything. I mean, I provide leadership. I chaired a budget and finance committee. I was there. I was not there in 2001 or 2003 when the first one passed. I was in the legislature, but I was there when the second one passed. But I don't want us to go back to that. I, when I'm, when, whenever I've had to run for re-election, I always say, we, we can't get anything done tomorrow talking about what we did yesterday. My record is all over the internet. I had 10 years. I chaired, uh, I chaired the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. I was a floor leader to Governor Barnes when I was there, one of his three, four leaders that was in the Senate. I was the first person to hold both of those positions at the same time, and the first woman to ever hold that position in the Senate. So I have a record of success, and I'm hoping that's what people want, is experience, especially today. You need someone to, who can go to Washington and turn things around and create jobs, aren't, aren't, and that's what my record aren't is. Aren't many people suggesting it's time to have a new change, a, to turn over what's been in Washington? Oh, absolutely, is it, is, is, absolutely, absolutely. Let me answer that. People want change. People want change. People voted for change in 08. They still say they haven't gotten the change. Let me tell you what change looks like. We have 15 men that represent us in Congress. 15. We do not have one woman, one qualified woman. That's change. All right, let, let me say this, um, man. Uh, Commissioner Stokes, she's right. She's held positions, but she's never created jobs. It's a big difference. Secondly, uh, I hear Commissioner talk about a woman needs to go to Washington. Women and men are out of jobs. Young teenagers, both boys and girls, are out of jobs. Small businesses owned by men and women are, are out of jobs. And two of the last three congresspersons from the 4th Congressional District were women. Right. So to say that women have not been represented in the 4th Congressional District, that is misinformation, misguided it's information. It's not misinformation. So I think gender is important. I have a record of appointing more women to key positions than any chief executive officer in DeKalb County's history. Does he have an edge though that women right. outvote, excuse me, okay. that women outvote black men? Is that a concern of yours? I think, and are you just writing the I woman's think, agenda? Oh no, I, I'm qualified. I have a record. But let me just tell you something else. Ask the 5,000 women who did not get pay equity that was in the news two weeks ago with Novartis that they had been discriminated against and the jury, when, the, when they went to court, they went to the Supreme Court. When they went to court, they found that those women did not get the same pay as the men. In the Senate, I had the Gender, gender Equity, Pay Equity Commission that we studied that, and we found that that was true. And the courts just found two weeks ago, 5,000 women at a, at a global company like Novartis is, is discriminating against women and paying, many, many, uh, the, paying the men more just because, I mean, they're in the same position. We cannot have that. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real problems and providing real solutions of making sure that women get paid the same as men. That's just one Mr. Issue. CEO, no, no, no tongue in cheek here, but I never heard you have a problem with women. <laughs> To the uh, let, let me say this. Um, the greatest woman I ever met was my mother. Of course. The second greatest woman I ever met was my sister. And those two women have shaped my life in terms of how women should be included. They, they have brains. Uh, they are smart. They are organized. They, they're good organizers. I made sure they were a vital part of my administration. But she's talking about Navarre's, and that's important. But let's talk about the thousands of women right now in DeKalb County, in Gwinnett County, in Rockdale County who are without jobs. 
This is about jobs first, and that's why I'm disappointed in the congressman. He will not come and talk about jobs. There is no plan. As a matter of fact, at the first debate, I revealed one of my economic development plans was to get money to go and extend the rail, MARTA, from South DeKalb out to Stonecrest. Okay. That would create thousands of jobs, economic prosperity. And here's what's interesting. Okay, I took that he me. went and begged Nancy Pelosi to put him on the Transportation Committee, four years as a county commissioner, four years as a congressman, he never talked about MARTA, never talked about transportation, but now he sends a press release out, oh, I'm on the Transportation Committee now, and he found religion, he wants to talk about jobs with transportation. Is that the power of incumbency? And will that work for him? That those who are suggesting, we're tired of incumbents. Here, here's what well, it shows. It, his, is his being a no-show and an incumbent, Here. and having President Obama's endorsement, is that gonna sway the electorate the Here's what I think it shows. people are I mean, independent just... thinkers. I think people in this district are independent thinkers, and I think that they will decide. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm sure he's happy that he got the president's endorsement, but I think the people that live in the 4th Congressional District are concerned about jobs. They're concerned about being able to educate their children, to get a good education, to be able to buy a home. That's what the American dream is about. And I, I'm just happy that I get the opportunity to represent, I've had the opportunity to represent people, uh, in the, some of the people in the 4th Congressional District, for 10 years in, as their state senator, to be on the, uh, the uh, commission now. I'm excited about that. And I always say that I am so excited that I grew up in a country where those things was, was possible in a place wherein I did not know my father, my mother was an alcoholic, I lived with my grandmother. And, and I, this is, that's why I say I work so hard and I'm going to Washington to get results because I've had to work hard all my life. My first job was when I was in high school. So when people start talking about what it is that they can do, I have a record of success. I have a record of working hard, and I will continue to work hard, and that's why I'm asking people to vote for me on July 20th to go to Washington and represent you and work hard and get results. Well, it sounds you, like a race, yeah. You know what, Maynard? Um, I started working when I started walking. If you, <laughs> if you live in a country, you worked from day one. Hard work ethics were developed. But let me, let me come back again. I, I appreciate Commissioner Stokes, and I think she's a fine person. Washington right now cannot balance a budget. There's record deficit spending. I have been an eight-year legislator and an eight-year chief executive, and by the Constitution, we had to balance the budget, only spend what we can bring in. I have a record of creating jobs. I have a record of, of creating the first local office of Homeland Security because Homeland Security starts at home. When you dial 911, it doesn't go to Washington. You're police and fire your first responders. I have a record of the environment of creating uh, green energy by capturing methane gas at our landfills and selling it to Georgia Power and they in return selling it back as green electricity, taking trash and turn it into cash. That's my record. I have a record of not laying anybody off. I have a record of hiring people and putting people to work. And that's what the problem is now. People want to go to work. And Congressman Johnson and this United States Congress have it wrong. And the president, I respect him. I want to protect him. I want to support him. I want to be a strongest ally. But if the president is wrong, I got to correct him. Mr. President, you can't put yourself around all these Ivy Leaguers. You got to have somebody around that got plenty walking around sense to know what's going on on the ground. <laughs> Stay with me on that moment. I, I am serious about this. I, I am very serious about this race. You know, I have what it takes. We're not even discuss experience. I'm just really... Uh, it, what I, does it take in the fourth division? Now, we had, we've had the, uh, the uh, uh, Cynthia McKinney, who was considered a way left, a way liberal. We've had uh, Denise, Denise, Denise Majette, who was kind of middle of the road. We have, we have uh, Congressman uh, Johnson, who we're not quite sure what he is other than a Buddhist. You know? uh, Guam uh, uh, man. What, what is going to take it? Has the district changed? Uh, can a Republican win here? What are you suggesting? What, I, I don't want to talk about whether or not a, a Republican can win because my, the way I've always done, I've been in many elections because the Senate was every two years and this is a four-year seat, but any name on the ballot, I treat them as a worthy opponent and figure they can win. And so I work very, very hard. I want to get out. I want to talk to the people. And the people will decide. Up ultimately, if you live in the 4th Congressional District, you will decide on July 20th when you go to the polls, who do you think will best represent this district? And again, I'm asking you to vote for me on July 20th because I have a strong record. And this is a legislative job. In this room, you all have experience because you've had jobs. 
This is a job to create legislation, to make policies that will move this economy forward. And that is what I have been doing. And in this race of the seven people running, I have more legislative experience than anyone else in this race. Mr. CEO, in this, in this race, is this an uphill battle or is the missing seat, is he vulnerable? Can you, one of you two actually take this thing? Or, well, well, let or me say this. I gotta say something that's really important. Uh, I've been a state legislator. It's a difference between a state legislator and being a chief executive. Um, legislators don't just legislate either. When you're talking about balancing a budget, when you're talking about creating health care reform, when you're talking about that immigration issue right now, because let me tell you the impact that's going to have on health care. If they allow those who are illegal to become legal under this health care, you know how many of us who were born, reared here with generations of family members here, and all of a sudden we're going to get pushed behind because these illegals are going to be U.S. citizens and they're going to get ahead of the line and they're going to get the health care. So you have, being a legislator is one thing, but you've got to be a legislator to understand the role of the chief executive and help shape that policy and understand the budgetary effects of it. Are you two? I, let me just, I need to respond to that because I chair the budget, the budget and finance committee and I, I've been, I'm responsible for directing that process. And what I said when the CEO gave us the budget December 15th is that we were not going to increase the millage rate in DeKalb County. We did not. We had seven votes that said we would not recommend a millage increase and, in, and we're still continuing to work on it. When we take that vote, we're still committed to because people People are hurting, and we do not want them want to raise taxes at this time. So that is very, very important. So I've been spearheading in DeKalb County right now. If you live in DeKalb County, you know that I have to make sure that the budget is balanced. I was over there today. We were going back and forth, doing the pluses and minuses, making sure yep, yep. that that budget will be balanced Bef on June, be before June 22nd. We go to, before we go to questions, and, and people who want to ask some questions of these two dynamic candidates, uh, here's Tara right here. Tara's going to be handling that aspect of it. But let's talk a bit briefly about the Cab County. And then those who suggest uh, the golden <clears throat> years are when you were CEO. Those who suggest that. And then now reports in AJC this week that the, the, the flavor, the cachet of the Cab is tilting downward. It's not quite the same. I'm just asking, have we lost the, the glow of the Cab County? And what can either of you do to restore it? Well, first of all, this four congressional district is DeKalb, Rockdale, and Gwinnett. Right. Was, Rockdale is not that great either. Yeah, well, I was out in Gwinnett earlier today, and I try to get throughout the whole district. I don't want the people in Gwinnett or Rockdale to feel, and this is, you know, you said it's streaming on the Internet, to feel that it's not about them. We were talking about the DeKalb County's budget because the CEO was there and, and I chair the budget process. But I think that people really, really want us to focus on turning the economy around. And what that means in DeKalb County, I'm, I'm not always happy with what is reported in the news, but it means that we've got we've to get jobs, we have to create jobs. That's what people are concerned about. They're concerned about all the foreclosures. Uh, I don't have people calling me and say, hey, well, our image is not doing good. I have people calling me like the lady today and saying, I, I need some help. You know, I don't have a job. I'm, I'm not able to pay my mortgage. Okay. My home is going into foreclosure. So I'm going to Washington and I'm running and asking for your support because I believe that based on my experience and experiences that I can get the results in Washington. And so I'm asking for your vote on July 20th to reclaim the American dream and to break up the good old boys network. Oh, yes, <laughs> man, let me say this. Um, you hitting on that. You hitting on these men, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, and she means it well. She, it's not, I don't think it's mean-spirited. Um, and I support her in women's initiatives. Let me be clear about that. But Maynard, when I was a chief executive, she has one vote. The chief executive has to gather up those votes to pass that budget. Now that comes with being persuasive, and it comes with doing a little horse trading. But you get your budget through. And I got my budget through every single year, and I never suggested raising the millage rate. The problem I had with some of the commissioners, though, they didn't see the whole county. They were so anti-business when it comes to zoning, anti-business when it comes to want to stop uh, pouring hours, for example, losing revenue. You can't keep cutting revenue and expect to have money in the budget. You can't do that. You, you, you can't be anti-small business. You can't be anti-quality economic development. And many of them had those parochial views, didn't want it to happen, and they choked themselves. And I know it's true because one of the commissioners said at a budget hearing uh, early in the year that Vernon Jones was right. He said he saw economic downturn coming. And, and by the way, I saw it in 2007. The AJC wrote an article that I was, uh, I was an isolated case. The cab was just an isolated case. 
Lo and behold, six months later, the state said their revenue was down 20%. But they use a professor who's never ran a government, never been elected to anything, doesn't know dilly squat to tell them about what government should and should not do. So I'm saying that to say, Maynard, we need strong executive and legislative and helping small businesses and health care reform, understanding the Brian, political th process. There you go, picking on AJC again. <laughs> well, I like the AJC. <laughs> I do. I like our, some of them are here. Eric is here. Eric's a great American. Where is Eric? He was here Eric, somewhere. Eric Sturgis. Great American. There he is. Covered me, me just, day and night. Yeah, let me just say this about that. Uh, what is very important, and that's why these, these types of forums are so important, uh, when, when, when Vernon talks about the fact that we didn't vote to, to we, we were anti-business. We were not anti-business. When you were elected, especially as a commissioner, people are calling you. They're coming down there. They show up at the meetings. We encourage them to come to the meetings. What you want is someone who's going to listen to you. And you can see it on everything that I publish. I will listen to you and I will work for you. It is very important when you elect people that they not run off on their own agenda. So I think that's important to look at in, when we have people come into the meetings and they say, well, we don't want you to, to, to extend pouring hours. We don't want any more nightclubs. I'm not going to stand up to them and say, oh, but we need business. And so that you have to understand the extent of those kind of issues. And so I am, again, asking people to send me to Washington so that I can get the results for you. I will listen to you and I will work for you. Mayna, those same people don't want you to raise their taxes when there's a budget shortfall. Those same people. And I didn't, I'm, so not, you have I'm to have recommending the, no millage increase. You have to have the courage to stand up for what's right overall. You, you, you can't sell to a one group over here, one group over here. What is best for the county? Uh, um, and if, you, if you're bringing in new revenues, Maynard, you can fund your budget. You can provide those essential services because people want more services. They don't come and say, look, pick my trash <laughs> only one time a week. They want more service. Give me more police. Give me more fire. Well, you got to pay for it. You well, can't have it both ways. Well, at the budget committee meetings this year, people said that they wanted their trash picked up once a week. But what can you do in Congress budget. to help that? Because Congress will impact Congress that. is a, it's a, it's a legislative position. Oh, you go up there and position. play with the concern. No, concern, no, black no. Concern. It's a legislative no, position. No, so no, what you want, what that, you were hoping you would have someone that would go to Congress and that would create, will be an advocate, would stand up for you, speak out for you, and create legislation that will improve your quality of life in the 4th Congressional District. Man, you... Let, let's, 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 let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. I don't want... To, but please, I, you, but no, please I was don't gonna, go, go to Congress. I was going to say okay, I like man, your necktie. I'm going to save you. We have, a, we have a, a gentleman here who happens to have three questions. So I'm going to warn you. If there's anybody else in the audience that has a question, you need to roll on up here. Otherwise, this brother gets his three questions in wow. a row. We're going to start with roll one. Roll on up here. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you. First of all, thank you for coming to this forum, uh, making yourselves available. I know it's, uh, you guys have a busy schedule. I understand that. Question. I appreciate that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right, first question. First question. Okay, and this goes to both individuals. Um, what do you plan on accomplishing if elected to uh, Washington? The second part is, um, okay, yeah, it's just one question. All right, my number one issue is transportation. My number one issue is to go up there and work on extending MARTA to Stonecrest Mall. That will help South Gwinnett County, Rockdale County, Newton County, that whole region. And the amount of jobs that be, will be created there it, and the work that will take place will be the next 15 to 20 years. Because first of all, just the announcement of it, land values will start to go up. The real estate industry would take off. She would be helpful in helping that. She'd get a job with that. <laughs> but, and then at the various stops, you would see economic development, mixed-use development take place. And those architect, design, engineering jobs, those small businesses that get help, the operation, the maintenance, it's amazing what can happen with that project. Well, Connie, other than getting a job with Vernon, what, what, how, are you, how are you, what are you going to do? Well, what, my first thing would be to really, really put policies in place to create jobs. And what we want to do is to have two components, training and development, so that we can connect the, the training of today with the jobs of tomorrow. And that's very, very, very important that we do that. And then to help small businesses to have access to capital. That is the primary thing that people need so that they can expand and they can create jobs. So I'm asking for your vote on July 20th to send me to Washington to represent you and uh, I will listen to you and I will work very hard for you. Tara? I'd like to know uh, what type of plans specifically do you all have that would include generating new forms or new streams of revenue that's thinking outside of the box. Ideas that do not include uh, 
cutting jobs or eliminating services or raising taxes? I think investing in renewable energy, uh, green jobs, uh, taking advantage of those existing landfills I was telling you about that's releasing that methane gas and growing that and making monies available in the, in the private sector for research and development. Ingenuity. You, you know, there was a time when somebody put a bridle around a horse and harness that horse, and that create the mule and the wagon. It allow people to transport transport goods from one place to another. Then they came up with the iron train, and people went to work laying tracks, and they moved cargo, and cities prospered. Then they came up with the car, and somebody had to build the roads, and somebody had to provi provide the, the pavement. What am I saying? Ingenuity. We have to make available and encourage those in, in the private sector to do research and development, whether it's renewable energy in the basis of uh, wind, solar. Etc. But but we have to lead the way. We we you're did. one congressperson. You're one rookie congressperson. Uh, aren't you asking, suggesting a, too a, much? A bee, a bumblebee can move an ox. <laughs> a bumblebee can move an ox. Yes, I, Let I, I think that you. what we need to do is really really focus on creating jobs. And the way you create jobs is having people in, through innovation, having people start their own businesses. And that's why we need to focus on. It's not people might say, well, it's it's really you're just talking about small businesses. No. That's where 65% of the jobs are created. And so that's why we want to really, really focus on those programs for small businesses. The, in answering your question, innovation is the private sector. Innovation, new ideas, new jobs, new businesses. It's not really about programs. It's really about uh, innovations and having people, uh, having the type of policies in place where people can create their own businesses. Okay, last question. Okay, we have one last question before we have to wrap it up. Hi, right, Dom. My question is, uh, which way would you guys go about cutting back on recidivism acts for this district, as well as helping convicts and felons get back into the community to become productive citizens? Okay, I, okay. I think one of the challenges right now is you have young men and women who have been in a situation where they committed a felon, nonviolent offense, and when they go to apply for a job, if they put on there they were convicted, they don't get the job. If they lie about it, they don't get the job. And I think we have to carefully look at that. What we need to do is to support those types of programs that's actually helping to get people transitioned back into society and reconnected with their families and having a su support structure. I want to acknowledge two people before we go, two people, Hank Stewart, who was, rules this roost on Sundays, the greatest Atlanta's poet laureate, and also a gentleman named Co uh, Courtney Dillard, who's running for Rockdale County Commission, the best guy I know, Courtney Dillard. One quick thing before Jim comes up, please. What question would you ask? No, man, it's not at the big. Fine. See, you always want to run the show. You always want to run the show. I can, but ask. I want to. I want to ask. Ask him a question. What would you ask him? A very brief question. All right. Where are you, Hank? <laughs> Closing remarks, uh, Mr. Uh, CEO of Newsmakers Live. Thank you, man. Let me thank you and Ms. Park and, and the executive producer and all y'all that are here. You know, I am really excited about this election. I am really excited about the potential of representing you in the United States Congress. I have worked for many of you before. I want to work for you again. I can get the job done. I, I appreciate y'all being here, and you took the time to evaluate the candidates. Judge us based on our experience. Judge us on, based on who you think can get the job done. Let me work for you again. I'll, sh I'll do you proud. Thank you so much. Ms. Connie Stokes, yes, Commissioner yes. Connie Stokes. Thank you. I, too, want to thank you. Thank you to Newsmaker Live for having us here tonight. Uh, I am asking again for your support to go to Washington and get results for you, to work hard, to pay attention to, to solutions, to get solutions for real problems, those problems that people talk about all the time, to stand up and speak out for you, to serve you with integrity and honor and without drama. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I think you have some, some good choices. Jim Welcome, executive producer, Newsmakers Live. Anyway, I'm the guy who doesn't have the sophistication we of know these that. gentlemen. We know that. However, I too am a Columbia graduate. Let's not get it tricked. Let's not get it messed up. All right? But at the end of the day, my thing is this. I don't do this for money, so I get to be brutally honest. 
When I listen to the candidates from the 4th District, I see politicians and then I see people who are politicians with a committed purpose. I'm not going to endorse anybody in front of you, but I'm going to say to you, of all the people who appeared here tonight, there is not one, there is only one person who didn't use some political ploy to get their way. And that person was Vernon Jones. Now why, I don't know. But I've been inundated re regarding this Liz Carter issue. And one of the candidates here even refused to appear if I didn't allow Liz Carter to participate. Now my, my position is this. Nobody gets to tell me how to do my show. Who does that? You don't tell 60 Minutes who they can have. Why would you do it to me? At the end of the day, we have heard from these candidates. And I need you to know that the candidate that has been least a problem to us, I talked about earlier. At the end of the day, I want you to know that the reality for us is that we need people who have intention to do good. Now, whether or not they're a Republican or a Democrat is insignificant to me. But if their intention is to serve you, and you know they have served you, maybe you need to think about where your next vote should be. Additionally, you need to know that there is not a person that was on the promotion to this that didn't say from day one that they were coming, including Hank Johnson. Hank Johnson told me Thursday of last week that he would not be here. He didn't say, you rescheduled this just so I could be here. He said he acted as if he had no knowledge of its existence. At the end of the day, to me, that's an affront. As the executive to Bruce, producer, and what that means, the guy who pays for all this shit, that pisses me off. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been Newsmakers.